Hi everyone, John here. Welcome back to my channel and another Whispers through the Jump Point. After a really busy uh, two weeks at work, I'm back. And also, after having to reinstall Windows and every piece of software on my new PC. Also back is Chris Roberts from the performance shoot in London. And he's really rolling his sleeves up and getting back into it. Chris Roberts is back in sunny California and uh, bearing in mind the weather in the UK at the moment he's lucky to be uh, out where the sun shines. Anyway uh, Chris has really been uh, busy this week and uh, he done a special 10 for the chairman. Well it was a Ben for the chairman where uh, Ben Lesnick uh, put uh, some questions from the community to Chris. Chris also uh, talked about uh, the progress uh, with the Star Citizen project so far and specifically answered the questions of uh, those who will not be named who actually uh, question whether Star Citizen is actually technically possible to be made. Anyway, this is what Chris said about that. Now, there are some claims that Star Citizen is too big, that it's an impossible project to complete. What's, what's your response to that? <laughs> um, I don't think it's impossible at all. I think it's very doable. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think maybe some, I may, maybe some people that claim that don't have uh, enough of a, uh, you know, imagination or don't have enough of, a, of the technical ability to do it. I mean, I know that in all the features that we've talked about in terms of the large persistent universe, how we're going to move between it, um, you know, how we're going to transition from uh, planets to space, move in and out of these big ships into smaller ships and uh, everything be seamless. Uh, we've got the fundamental, uh, you know, technology pretty much cracked. I mean, we're going to go to GamesCon, which is in a few weeks, uh, and we'll sort of show the next iteration. We're going to show the first large world uh, map um, and you know this is only just a small corner of possibility of it and it's you know the the gas giant you're orbiting around is 182,000 kilometers in diameter and I think we have three moons maybe four moons and you know if you just flew between them at top speed in like the fastest ship it would be about two and a half hours at the moment uh, of course we're going to have the uh, sort of a, a quantum drive quick jump to get between some of the stuff but it's all in the same area same level there's no loading no loading screens pulling it all together you know, I, I, I can't look at you right now and say, but, you know, here's, here, 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 here's an absolute ironclad date. Everything will be ready by this date. But I definitely know we're, we're going to be there and we'll be delivering it. And, uh, and, and everyone along the way will be playing and seeing and all this stuff that will happen. And, uh, you know, before they, before they know it, they'll be having this game that they've dreamed of. And uh, so what do I say to people? Bullshit. <laughs> well, that was only part of Chris's answer to that question. And uh, in fact, he talks in great length about Star Citizen and answers a lot more questions in that special 10 for the chairman. And uh, please see the link in the video and also our poster link in the description. And it's well worth a watch. Well, we're back in my hangar now looking at my Constellation Andromeda. Now, this is a ship which is undergoing extensive work to get it ready for the multi-crew uh, version of Arena Commander. And in, in Around the Verse, Josh Coons and Chris Smith talked about their work on the Constellation. Hey guys, this is Chris Smith and Josh Coons, and we're here to talk about the Constellation rework. So, you know, we're starting the Constellation rework, and uh, basically we had to start from the ground up with it, and uh, that means we work in how we even assemble it and so it's easier for us to do variations after. And so we started with that and we're logically assembling, assembling the constellation in a Lego-like format so it's easier to tack on different parts and modules. We call them modules. And so I'm doing the interior currently and Josh Coons is working on the exterior. It's yeah. been, it's, it's super fun pushing the envelope on something that people are already familiar with and then uh, We've gotten good feedback from the feedback that we've gotten so far from the public on on the conning the people that have chris really digs it um, a lot of the rework right now um, 
I mean, the interior, I would say, probably changed the most um, so far out of everything. I mean, the exterior that he's doing, I mean, he's making everything look much better and, and more detailed. And, you know, a lot of the little clusters, you know, um, you know, like the little maneuvering thrusters and stuff like that, that didn't really have a whole lot of detail, all nicely modeled They're out all now. They're still there. Yeah. I mean, a lot of this, the exterior stuff, the, the exterior style is still the same and how it was. Um, the interior, on the other hand, was reworked quite a bit by me. I think the interior was also the most problematic issue with the Constellation, with the old version. It's already been reworked, uh, you know, yeah. based off, you know, fan input, you know, that we've had over the years and stuff. And Some stuff just didn't... And it didn't, didn't work, work or make sense. So, yeah, I took the chance to, to add a couple of things, to subtract a couple of things to make things more efficient. I mean, for example, the the front nose area, we sort of have the constellation section off by a nose, a neck, a body, and a tail. And he does the same for the exterior. So yeah. each module can be removed and, and then we could assemble a new ship with it, basically. Yeah. And um, so for the nose section and the interior, we've added, and each section, well, basically has a bulkhead that separates it. So there's actually a new bulkhead that separates the cockpit from the living quarters now. So um, it makes more sense that way, you know, to, we had uh, to have everything so nothing comes exposed to to the to space in case like you know yeah, something happens. It's airtight now. Yeah. For the full around of Earth, please click on the link in the video and in the description. Star Citizen one point one point five Alpha is now available, and uh, this has changed Arena Commander quite a lot. First of all, it's introduced the Merlin uh, as a playable ship, and that's available for $20 from the Pledge Store, and it's a really nice little ship to fly. Also, uh, the Vandal Scythe is now flyable. Now, uh, very few people own this ship. It was actually one which was put up for sale for a limited period uh, in the uh, initial uh, days of the crowdfunding for Star Citizen. Uh, but... If you're an Imperata subscriber, you can rent the Vandal Scythe uh, for quite a large dose of REC credits. And uh, I've done that, so I'm going to make the most of my rental period for the Vandal Scythe. Now, both ships are really nice to fly and uh, they're really enjoyable. I'm going to actually make some further videos and go into more detail on these ships uh, in the future. There's also been a lot of changes to the actual way the uh, the game uh, plays. A uh, lot of uh, changes in the way the ships fly, uh, damage states, and uh, a whole list of things which uh, are really uh, too much to go into detail here. And uh, all these changes are just ongoing, and there's going to be more changes in the future. Now the only thing which didn't make it into the 1.1.5 version is the new launcher. Now that's not ready, which is a shame because it does introduce some new music from Pedro Macedo Camacho. And it's actually a, uh, a new version of his, uh, I think it's the Magistry of uh, Space theme. And uh, here's a little bit of it now.
Well, that's really great music from Pedro Macedo Camacho. I can't wait to hear the uh, full Star Citizen score in the future. Now, that's just some of the picks of the uh, best of the news from Cloud Imperium Games and the Star Citizen Universe this week. Um, I especially uh, recommend that you check out the RSI website and also check out a new video there called uh, Game Commander, which has also got Chris Roberts appearing in it, and it actually uh, shows what his average day involves. Hopefully there'll be a lot more in this series, as I think it's really great to see uh, everyone hard at work, and it shows you that uh, Chris Roberts does a lot more than just talking. Well, that's a longer episode than normal because I wanted to uh, bring you some uh, more Vandal, Scythe and Merlin footage and uh, hopefully I'll be doing some future videos on the uh, Vandal, Scythe and the Merlin. Anyway, uh, if there's enough news, I'll be back next week, but I've got a feeling that a lot of news is going to wait until uh, Gamescom, but we just have to wait and see. Well, thank you very much for watching, and uh, wherever you're watching out in that big universe, you take care, and I'll see you again soon. And remember, and remember, and remember, and remember, you never know what's going to come through that jump point. Jump, 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 jump.